Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. All right, everybody. I'm back. Good to be back. Good to be back. Uh, so... As you can see, I'm still here at the Final Four, Phoenix, Arizona, beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Um, but as great as this Final Four has been, and as exciting as Monday will be, by the way, we'll, Monday morning we'll do our full preview of UConn, Purdue, what's going to happen, how it's going to go down, all that good stuff. But at the same time, as crazy as it sounds, I would argue that there has actually been another story that has been more at the forefront in the people that I talk to, the circles that I run in, because nobody knows what the heck is going on with the Arkansas head coaching job. And so it is absolute chaos. And I just want to spend about 10, 15 minutes going with an update for you all and kind of just try to give you a sense of what I know. Because right now there is just so much information out there. It is so hard to separate fact from fiction. And I think it's for a couple reasons. One, it's a coaching search, right? Um, but two, you know, it, it, it's, it's a big school, prominent school, SEC. It seems like everybody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. But I'd also add, it, you know, it's final four weekend. All of the coaches are together. People are talking. And so what's wild is really quickly, and I promise we'll get to Arkansas in a minute, but you get to one of these final fours and I can tell you, it's like a game of telephone. Everybody hears, oh, this guy is going to take this job. And what do you think? And then you kind of look into it. And you talk to somebody who knows somebody, you talk to somebody else, and it's like, it's just a big game of telephone. And so separating fact from fiction, this Arkansas thing has been crazy, but we haven't done an update since Eric Musselman officially accepted the USC job on Thursday night. Figures it was at least worth having a quick conversation. First off, listen, I don't want to spend too much on stuff that you already know. The Chris Beard stuff, though, I do believe was real. I don't want to spend too much time on it. We talked about it already. We talked about him as the can the leading candidate already. And I believe that when I went to air on Thursday night, I believe that most of the power brokers at Arkansas believed he was going to be their next head coach. We talked about it. Everybody kind of knew Coach Muss was kind of sniffing around, kind of trying to figure out what his next move was if there was another opportunity outside of Arkansas. Everybody knew he wanted USC. And as I told you, USC was really open about four or five days uh, before Eric Musselman officially accepted it. Or heck, it was open about four or five days before Andy Enfield even left because, again, of contract buyout. So I know for a fact there were there was conversations between both sides. And I believe Chris Beard was on the precipice of taking it. And then all of a sudden, at the last minute, they get to the home stretch. And my understanding, and again, trying to separate fact from fiction, I'm not blaming all of it on Arkansas, but was that there was something administratively that, you know, they, 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 they had everything agreed to in principle. And then all of a sudden, things changed at the last minute. So Beard was like, wait a second, now I got a great thing going at Ole Miss. AD loves me. I'm a, you know, I got plenty of time to build this thing right here. I'm not, I'm not going to scramble back in if you guys don't have your stuff together. And so Chris Beard said, no, Jerome Tang, I'll be honest. You know, I heard throughout the year that he was interested in looking for other opportunities in general, but I was also kind of told pretty early on when Chris Beard says, no, I'm coming back to Ole Miss. I was told that Jerome Tang it didn't ever really feel real. He may have been the, the the guy that they most pursued right after that, but I think Jerome Tang was maybe using Arkansas as a leverage play. I heard about four or five days before Eric Musselman officially left, if it opened, Jerome Tang might not be as interested as people thought. And so I don't know if he was ever really a candidate, but obviously pretty quickly, um, you know, he decided to go back to Kansas State. So let's get into everything since then, because you knew that stuff. And I will tell you, it is sheer chaos trying to figure out fact from fiction in this situation. First off, let me say this. Listen, the, the big name outside of those two, Beard and Tang, we know about them. We've talked about them. It's obviously Will Wade, right? And so Will Wade, listen, this is what I can tell you definitively. I believe that Will Wade wants the Arkansas job. I believe that if, if Arkansas had prioritized or does prioritize, let me leave him back. Track. I know that Will Wade wants the job. I guess what I'm trying to say is I have yet to really get a feel for exactly how interested Arkansas is in Will Wade. Now, I believe that they have since spoken to him probably uh, at some point. I, I feel pretty confident saying that they have probably spoken to him at some point. 
but it wasn't the immediate Jerome Tang says no Friday morning and we immediately move on to Will Wade. That is not the sense that I get at all. I think they looked into other people. I think there's something about Will Wade. Is it that they don't trust him? They don't believe in him, whatever, because I'll tell you this. I do think he's kind of the candidate that if you're Hunter Yurchek, I kind of feel like you got to land him, right? Um, you look at kind of the names that I think Arkansas fans would be happy with. And I'll be honest, you guys can comment in the YouTube section, but I think there's a lot of people that don't even want Will Wade. So you start getting below Will Wade all of a sudden. Now you have a fan base that is truly divided on the next head coach of the Arkansas basketball program. And so I haven't gotten the sense that, um, that, that, that Hunter Yurchek is as eager to make Will Wade the next head coach as possible. Now, bottom line, by the way, just because he's he might not have been the first choice or a priority even after Jerome Tang said no, doesn't mean necessarily um, that at the same time that, that he isn't going to end up being the next head coach. What I'm just saying is when he when you moved off of Jerome Tang, he didn't immediately that second rise to the top. And so, listen, I think Will Wade would be a great coach at Arkansas. I've said it from the beginning. Listen, first of all, I think he's really kind of an interesting combination of things. He's a young guy who has proven – he can win at the highest level of the SEC, SEC regular season champion. At LSU, we know about that. Remember, anything that you think that he did is now legal in the NIL era. Oh my goodness, he may have slipped some kids some cash. Well, guess what? Now we get this thing called collectives, writing checks for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so you're Will Wade, you know, listen, you sit there and say like, like he won at LSU. You know, uh, what he was, what, what people were mad at him for at LSU is now legal. And I'll also add this. This is what intrigues me about Will Wade. He's in his early 40s. And so I think sometimes you get these older guys. They've had success. You know, they want to do it their way, blah, 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 this and that. Will Wade's not that. Will Wade's got a chip on his shoulder because of how things ended at LSU. Now, I don't think he's in a rush to leave McNeese State. I think he even publicly said, I don't plan on leaving this offseason. But I know he wants that Arkansas job. I know he sees the potential in that job and really all the stuff we've talked about with Eric Musselman, the in-state talent, the, the portal era, the NIL, which we're going to get into in a minute. So Will Wade, I believe is a tangible guy. Chris Jans and the Mississippi state coach, I believe is tangible as well. Okay. So Chris Jans, um, remember Chris Jans is at Mississippi state. And I'll be honest, even last off season, you kind of got the sense that he would be for the right job, be willing to listen. I think he likes it at Mississippi State. I think he's happy at Mississippi State. But I think he also understands, like, this is a really hard job that is only going to get tougher as time goes on. You're now adding Texas and Oklahoma, Mississippi State, listen, great school, whatever. But resources-wise, it is one of the more under-resourced in the SEC. Now, you could argue it's still top 25 nationally or whatever. But when you're going up against Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, LSU, Texas, Oklahoma, that's a tough job. And so I do think Chris Jans is interested. I do think if Arkansas got him, it'd be good. Now, the style of play isn't super fun or sexy. It's all about defense and toughness. But I also think that's a type of style that would resonate with Arkansas. And so I think Chris uh, Chris Jans is at least interested. I think it's real. Um, and I think he kind of gets like there is a pretty low ceiling at Mississippi State. And I'm not saying that he's in a rush to get out but I don't think he would hate it if the opportunity presented itself. A couple other names, you know, that, that have been linked uh, to Buzz Williams and Porter Mosier. I'll kind of put them together because I'll be blunt. If it's Buzz Williams or Porter Mosier, I think we might get a fan base revolt, okay? And I love Arkansas fans. I don't blame you on this because what those two guys have in common is it feels like they have kind of hit a wall at where they're at and it looks like they're trying to get an escape hatch. And so you hire one of those two guys, and I'll be honest, I'm going to tell you how I really feel. I wouldn't, I, They wouldn't be priorities to me. Now, Buzz Williams historically has been good, but let's also call a spade a spade. Buzz Williams got to Arkansas, got to Texas A&M the same year as Eric Musselman got to Arkansas. Five seasons, two NCAA tournaments. Now, granted, one year he was the first team out, and that was the year that he went ballistic on the committee, but two NCAA tournaments, one NCAA tournament win. And I was, I remember asking people about this months ago with Buzz. I said, you think he's going to try to get out this off? No, he's from Texas. And I'm like, Buzz Williams has a track record. He's almost like, remember old school Bill Belichick? Bill Belichick would trade a player a year before you kind of realize that they were falling off. And Buzz Williams always kind of gets out at just the right time. Marquette, they're kind of at the top. Why would you leave? 
Well, because it probably can't get better than this. Virginia Tech, you make a Sweet 16, you got to stay, sign an extension. Nope, you got to go to Texas A&M. And so you look at Texas A&M, they're going to lose several marquee players. And I do wonder if he's just sitting there saying like, it's not really going to get any better than this. So it's probably worth looking around, which I think is exactly what's happening. And so because of it, I don't know that I'd be that eager if I'm Arkansas. Oh, let's just take somebody else's problem. Let's take somebody else's, the, 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 you know, guy that, that, that they don't really want. I don't know that I love it. Porter Mosier, listen, Porter Mosier is a, a disaster, okay? He's been a disaster at Oklahoma. I like the hire. Listen, he gets stuff wrong. I like the hire. He was good at Loyola Chicago. It's just not clicking. Um, I was told the DePaul stuff was more real than people think. Um, you could agree, disagree, whatever. But if you remember, there was like a report for a day that that he was already putting a staff together and raising NIL money and da-da-da-da. And then he had to put out a statement of like, no, 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 no. Love it here. Love my Sooners. Guess what ended up happening? They lose in the opening round of the Big 12 tournament, get left out of the NCAA tournament. Now basically all his best players have hit the portal. It is a disaster there. I think on paper right now, I know Arkansas doesn't have any players, but Oklahoma could be the worst team in the SEC next year. So if you if it, it, let me put it this way. If Hunter Yurchek hires, um, if Hunter Yurchek hires, um, if he hires Porter Mosier, I mean, he might as well just pack his pack his bags. I, as a matter of fact, I'll take it a step further. I'm not smart enough to know how administratively all of this stuff works. I don't even think he could get that approved by his board of trustees. So we'll see on that one. Uh, a couple of young guys, you know, Bucky McMillan from Sanford. Listen, I I think it's kind of an interesting deal, right? Bucky McMillan, 40 years old, plays that pressing full court three point style. I don't want to make the comparison, but there was once an era in Arkansas basketball called 40 minutes of hell. And I will say, I, I, I've talked to enough Arkansas fans that feel like if it all falls apart, if it all falls apart, you could do a lot worse than getting a 40 year old head coach that just won like 29 games at Sanford. I think if you're watching this video, you know, but he's at Sanford. Fourth year, was a high school coach not that long ago. Just went to the NCAA tournament, gave Kansas fits. So I think he's kind of that young guy that if you can't get anybody else, um, you at least make a phone call. Very quickly, there is one more name that I do think is at least worth mentioning um, in this whole conversation. And it is, it is who you think it is. It is John Calipari, the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats, okay? And so a couple things. You know, this was one of those things like it started as a an internet rumor and there's no way it couldn't be possible, it would never happen. Let me let me let me just walk you through why I don't think it's going to happen, but I don't think it's insane. Listen, remember there was a two or three day stretch there. It's easy to forget now. It was only 2 weeks ago. But there was a two or three day stretch where if you remember, nobody was certain if John Calipari was going to be the next head coach or was going to be the coach at Kentucky next season. And so because of it, um, you know, there were rumors that Cal was looking around. I, you know, I can't remember everything that was open at that time, but was it a Michigan? Was it somewhere else? Is there somewhere he could land and leave Kentucky without getting fired because there was a belief he was going to get fired. And so him and Mitch Barnhart have that, that sit down and obviously he comes back. But I think for the right job, he would absolutely leave. Now, is Arkansas that right job? I don't know. But what I do know, and I know both Arkansas fans know this, I know both Kentucky fans know this. He has a great relationship with John Tyson of Tyson Chicken. Why is that relevant? John Tyson is one of the, the Tyson family is one of the biggest boosters of the University of Arkansas. And so listen. There are tiers. What do, what do the kids say? There, there, there are layers. There are whatever to everything. And there's a difference between being a really rich guy and having so much money that you can't spend it all. And so when you're looking at Calipari, listen, if he's that close with John Tyson and John Tyson wants to make it happen, he can write all the checks that you need to write. First of all, remember, there's no buyout, uh, uh, you know, that you would owe, uh, you know, like it's not like you fired a coach and you owe him money. Remember, like Ohio State, Fired John, uh, fired Chris Holtman. They owed him fourteen million dollars, so it limited what they could do in their search. Well, remember, uh, Eric Musselman left of his own volition. He didn't get fired. Obviously, I believe there was a small buyout attached to that, two three million. So that's just a little bit going into the coffers at Arkansas. But then Calipari, I don't believe, has a buyout if he wants to leave. Now, for 
Kentucky to fire him, it's 33 million. But if he wants to leave, that is a different story. And so I just bring it up. He's got the relationships. Um, and one guy could basically write all the checks that we know that he has a relationship with. And so again, we know he was thinking about leaving. Is there a spot for me? I'll just say, I do listen, I, I don't think it's gonna happen. I'll just be honest. I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think it's zero percent either, but but I, you know, listen, I just don't think you're John Calipari. You've been coaching at one of the crown. And listen, I love Arkansas. This is not a disrespect, but you're coaching at Kentucky. I think you just got to ride it out. You got to hope you figure it out and you can retire on your own terms. I just can't see job hopping at 63, 64 years old. And then there's the Arkansas component of this of how happy would Arkansas fans be to have John Calipari. So it is a crazy world. It's hard to know what's true and what's not, but that is what I know as of about 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 Central on Sunday night. And as soon as I have something good, as soon as I have something more, we will reconnect on this.